would my right honourable friend join me and all our colleagues on this side of the House in condemning the actions and propaganda of Hezbollah and Hamas. The point he makes about Hamas is important. We should be clear about who they are. They are a terrorist group who believe in killing Jews. And that's why uh, the, whatever the right honourable gentleman says about combating anti-Semitism in the Labour Party will mean nothing until he withdraws the remark that they were his friends. He needs to do it, and he should do it today. Later today, later today Mr Speaker, Commemorations begin for Holocaust Memorial Day in Israel. I hope there is agreement right across all parts of this House in sending our best wishes to those commemorating the occasion and sending a very clear statement that anti-Semitism has no place in our society whatsoever and we all have a duty to oppose it. First of all, let me join the right honourable gentleman in saying yes, of course, we should always support Holocaust Memorial Day, whether it is here in the United Kingdom, where we have a number of commemorations, or indeed in Israel. But I'm going to press him on this point because he did did say this. He said, it will be my pleasure and my honour to host an event in Parliament where our friends from Hezbollah will be speaking. I've also invited friends from Hamas to come and speak as well. Now, Hamas and Hezbollah believe in killing Jews, not just in Israel, but around the world. So would he take this opportunity, because if he wants to clear up the problem of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, now is a good time to start. Withdraw that they're your friends. Mr Speaker, I've made it very clear Labour is an anti-racist party and there is no place for anti-Semitism within it. We've suspended any members that have undertaken any anti-Semitic activities or work or statements and have established an inquiry led by Shami Chakrabarti. The, dis the, points, the points he was making earlier relate to a discussion I was hosting in order to try to promote a peace process, and it was not an approval of those organisations. I absolutely do not approve of those organisations. But I'm afraid he's going to have to do this one more time. He referred to Hamas and Hezbollah as his friends. Yes. Now, he needs to withdraw that remark. Let me give him another chance. Are they your friends or are they not? Because those organisations, in their constitutions believe in persecuting and killing Jews. They are anti-Semitic organisations, they're racist organisations. He must stand up and say they are not his friends. Mr Speaker, obviously anyone that commits racist acts or is anti-Semitic is not a friend of mine. It's very clear, it's very clear about that. <coughs> I'm very clear about that. I would also invite him to think for a moment about the conduct of his party and his candidates in the London mayoral election. The way in which they're systematically smearing my friend, the member for Tooting, who's our candidate for mayor. I wish him well, and I invite the Prime Minister to undertake to ensure that the Conservative Party in London desists from the activities it's undertaking at the present time in smearing my friend. But I completely reject what he says about Labour's candidate for the London mayoralty. I would make this argument, as I said before at this dispatch box, we are not responsible for everything someone says when they share a platform with us. We can't control everyone who appears in a picture, but there is a pattern of behaviour with the Honourable Member for Tooting. And let me tell him. He shared a platform with Sajil Shaheed, the man who trained the ringleader of the 7-7 attacks and accused the United States of bringing 9-11 on themselves. He shared a platform with an extremist who called for Jews to be drowned in the ocean. When this was put to the Honourable Member for Tooting, this is what he said. He described it as mere flowery language. Now, if he wants to know why he has a problem with anti-Semitism, it's because his candidate share platform after platform after platform with extremists and anti-Semites and then excuse their words one more time. Say you withdraw the remark about Hasma, Hamas and Hezbollah being your friends. 
Mr Speaker, last week the Prime Minister tried, as he often does, to smear my friend, the member for Tooting, by his uh, association with Solomon Ghani. It turns out that Mr Ghani is actually an active Conservative supporter who has shared platforms with the Honourable Member for Richmond. He also uh, should reflect on the words said by Lord Lansley some years ago that racism was endemic within his party. We have set up, we have set up a commission of inquiry. I suggest he might think about doing the same thing. But I'm not going to let this issue rest about the Honourable Member Tooting. He raised the case of Suleiman Ghani, who, who the member for Tooting shared a platform with nine times. This is a man who says it's wrong to stop people to go and fight. And Look, as long as it takes. Do you want to know? Do you want to know the views of the person that your your leader has just quoted? He described women as sub right. The Honourable Member for Islington might be interested in this. He described women as subservient to men. He said that homosexuality was an unnatural act. He, he stood on a platform with people who wanted an Islamic State. That is why his attempts to deal with anti-Semitism are utterly condemned to failure. Because he won't even condemn people who sit on platforms with people like that. Mr Speaker, I did point out to the Prime Minister, I was actually trying to help him, that uh, the gentleman concerned is actually a Conservative. But once again, I say to him, we are investing in the schools to give people opportunity. We're investing schemes to allow people to own homes to give them opportunities. He opposes all those things because the truth is this. He may be a friend of the terrorist group Hamas, but he's an enemy of aspiration. Yeah.